You just want to do an intro? Yeah, what's our intro? Um... Welcome to the final boss. My name is Raccoon Chad from TrollStompGaming.com. And I'm Jossum from TrollStompGaming.com. No way. Yeah. I had no idea who you were. It's wild. Um, <laughs> we're here today. We're going to talk to you about a subject that, to us, is important to tell the gamers. Because... Because we think that you guys need to know about who's raping you and why they're doing it. So this this episode of The Final Boss is titled E.A. Simpson, If I Did It. <laughs> and if you don't get that, it's fine. You're probably born in like 2004. Anyways. Um... <laughs> wow, way to just like insult the audience. And like, it's going to be all of our friends first. Too, so, that first hear off, this. so first off. So first off. Don't be the meta too much. That's too much meta. Okay, so first <laughs> off, um, we <clears throat> we think that a great example, in fact, probably the prime example, well, one of the prime examples of uh, a company that creates games basically just for monetary gain, not for any actual purpose of increasing the amount of fun the games give or... Anything like that is Activision. Yeah. Um, They're the ones that make the Call of Duty games, you know, all those things. And the thing is, like, the the old Call of Duty games, those were actually pretty fun. Yeah. Like, do you remember some of the old ones? Like, the ones for when, like, you still had, like, Windows XP, and, like, that was it. <laughs> yeah, Call of Duty, the original Call of Duty games were really fun. I actually liked the older Call of Duty games more than I liked the Battlefield games because I like World War Two and World War One era games a lot, um, like Day of Defeat and stuff. But, uh, you know, I remember they they made Call of Duty 3 and they put it on the Wii, and I mm. freaked out because I it was when the Wii was first coming out, and I was like, oh my god, I'm actually going to have to aim this, this fucking stick at things and and shoot at people, and I thought it was going to be really tight, and I played it, and I'm just awful at the Wii, so it didn't really work out. I was really disappointed. But still, that was that was even before their rapetacular bonanza that yeah. they seem to be in now. <clears throat> just just to touch on the old ones once more, but um, <clears throat> the reason I like the old Call of Duty games is because they seemed like it's like you were taking part in like a little story that happened during the like the World War, and it seemed very cinematic. Like it was really cinematic. Like the dialogue was going on around you, and like there was actual like stuff happening, and like certain events would happen. Like the closer you got to them, and it was just it seemed very like natural, and the flow was really good, you know. But it's just like it just went downhill from there because like, you know, yeah, modern warfare and whatnot. Well, <clears throat> so here's here's a prime example. Um, the first time I ever played one of the one of the newer Call of Duty games was with um, my cousin. I was at. I was at her house, and she had Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1 had just come out, which I believe is Call of Duty 4. I think so, yeah. And <laughs> um, and I remember, you know, we were playing, and the game the game was actually fun. Uh, it was I was playing on console, though, and I am awful at FPS on console. Total, totally different subject. And the, But the game was fun. Um, it really is a run-and-gun style game, though. There's not a lot of precision... I felt, um, being a Counter-Strike player especially, like, it's hard to make a precision game that ports well to, to consoles anyways. Um, but I actually got a Call of Duty game with one of my graphics cards, the World at War game, and I played it online, and it was, like, it was cool because it was World War II, but they took the elements, like, the run-and-gun feel of, of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, like, that same style, and even though it was, uh, I don't even know if that one was uh, was an Activision one, but it still just felt, it just, I don't know, it just felt really just awful. Like, e yeah, yeah, the, the, the single player was actually pretty fun for the most part. The storyline was, like, fun, and it was challenging, but again, like, this was at the point where they were basically just making the games already for the uh, multiplayer value, because mm -hmm. the single player content was just so short. <clears throat> right. So... 
that's uh that's my real uh experiences with the newer call of duty games yeah but my my experience of call of duty was obviously on the pc because like you know whenever i was playing counter-strike i was like i don't really want to play counter-strike all the time you know so that's why i would play like david defeat and i was like hey i like these kind of war style things so i'll play call of duty because apparently those are pretty good and reviews are good and they were on sale so i got into call of duty like way later um <clears throat> after like the first one dropped but because it was on sales like one of the platinum hits and i was just like oh man like this is cheaper now because that's kind of what i do um and i mean i've never really been a fan of like first person shooters for the consoles anyways because like using the controller for a first person shooter just seems really unnatural to me so yeah which call of duty game did you get <sighs> i think it was the first one because that fair Call of, no, the first Call of Duty for like the PC. Oh, you, yeah. oh, I see. But what you're but saying. but the Modern Warfare ones, I I never bought. Um, oh, okay. My brother would rent them sometimes, and like sometimes I would go to like one of my friends that I'm that I you know hung out with sometimes in college, Kristen. She would play it. She was like really into those games for some reason. I don't know why, and she fucking loved them. I see. Yeah. Yeah, and now I mean, um, Black Ops Two uh, just came out a little bit ago. And I know a ton of people are playing that game right now. Um, at least, I'll give them credit because at least they, they're they starting to actually release the games on PC and they're meant for PC rather than porting them like way later and making them shitty. Like, But again, it's still, it's I don't know, it just has that run and gun feel. I, I, I guess I don't have too much experience, but... You know, it just seems to me the the whole idea of bringing up Call of Duty and Activision in this in this sense is just to to mention the fact that they've been putting out a game every year to year and a half. Yeah, and they're really not changing much, other than the setting and maybe some of the guns. And it's just like it's they're basically just making everybody pay sixty dollars to play the newest installment of this series, when in reality you could be playing Modern Warfare 1 or World at War, like one of the first, you know, multiplayer ones released and still probably be having just as much fun because it's the same damn game. Yeah, it's like it's like watching the same movie over and over, you know? It's just, it seems, it, it, to me, it just seems like the same thing over yeah. and over. And, like, maybe with a finer, like, a, a few, like, minor alterations. Like, actually, I, I, I recant that um, or take it back. Uh, it's kind of like watching... Uh, different versions like a director's cut and then like the producer's cut and then like the original cut and then the theatrical cut like there's a little bit of a variation between the movies but for the most part it's the same movie and it does kind of like says the same stuff but like ultimately like maybe it has a different ending or like the yeah. villain may be different or like you know like you said the setting and like different guns yeah like, who really cares and you know i mean i'm not afraid to just come out and say like those games are fucking garbage you know i fucking hate those games they're <laughs> dumb and pointless and I hate the leveling system because, like, you know, it's I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's awful. No, no, I compl I I agree. And I mean, that's why we're podcasting it. This is our opinion. But also, for the record, if you're buying these games upon release, like, just understand that you're literally you're feeding the machine. Like, I'm not trying to be that guy, but don't tell me you pay sixty dollars for eight hours of of single player content because. If you go online to, to Steam, there are many games that you can play that are just multiplayer games that you can buy for 10 to $25 or whatever. So if you're telling me that you paid $60 for 8 hours, 8 to 10 hours of single player content, like, I'm sorry, that's not valid. Mm -hmm. You're literally paying $60 to get fucked in the ass and... <laughs> level up your fucking prestige bullshit. Not counting the DLC either, you know? Like, we haven't even touched on DLC at all. I don't, I don't actually want to talk about DLC for that shit. <laughs> uh, but you know who else? <laughs> what other games Activision made that in in the beginning, again, another fruitful and fun game that I think everybody can, can say that they enjoyed. And the music, this is something we're going to talk about again later. Um, Tony Hawk, Pro Skater. Let's just be honest. The soundtrack of my childhood for those first two games. Soundtrack of everybody's childhood, I, I, I'm assuming for, you know, a lot of people. That game is the reason I like Ska, and if you don't like Ska, you obviously don't like fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> but seriously, Tony Hawk, the first, the first like, two or three games were really cool, and then 
they just started making like all that crazy shit with like the Wii and like the the board that you're supposed to stand on. It's like I'm sorry, but if you bought a board to plug into your Wii to skate for Tony Hawk Pro Skater, go buy a real skateboard for the same amount of money and actually skate because not only will you still be getting less fat, but you'll actually be doing a real sport instead of pretending you're doing a real that's, sport <clears throat> while still not doing a real sport at all. Yeah, that's kind of like uh, it's like playing Guitar Hero and not actually learning how to play the guitar, which is funny because Guitar Hero was also produced by Activision. What? See what I did there? I tied it all together. Mind blown. Okay. Mind blown. And Guitar Hero... I feel personally, again with the first like three games, um, I know Red Octane had a handle on some of this as well, but I know uh, I know I think they worked hand in hand on on most of the games. But Guitar Hero was a ton of fun for the first couple games. You know they had a really diverse soundtrack and it was something new and fresh and fun. I know there's a another game in Japan that was released uh, that was basically the same thing that was before Guitar Hero, but. Guitar Hero brought it to the USA, made it a little bit more mainstream. You I know, think you... I know which game you're talking about. Like, I remember going to some arcades and seeing Illusions. Like yeah. Illusions. Yeah. yeah. It's not there. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, I think it was called Guitar King. Something like that. Because, uh, but it was more like Rock Band because uh, because it it also played with a keyboard and, and other things as well. But um, <laughs> But the Guitar Hero thing, again... The first few games were really fun, and then they just started making, like, Aerosmith and Green Day, and they're... I'm sorry, but if you buy that, you're being raped. Legitimately, EA Simpson style. <laughs> because, honestly, you nobody likes Aerosmith that much. Like, not even... Ma- not, e- not, not even Steven Tyler bought... <laughs> <laughs> Guitar Hero Aerosmith Edition. Not even Peter Chris likes them that much. Yeah. I don't even like Peter Chris. Who does? But um but yeah, so that's just uh Activision. That that sums it up for Activision, honestly. Um again, all those games had potential and, and in the beginning were really great, and then I feel like Activision, you know, just started pumping games out yearly or bi yearly to just just get money. At well, this they're trying point. to keep up with the competition, which is understandable. Like <clears throat> they're trying to keep up with all those other shit companies that are just like pumping out, you know, hollow titles and like hollow sequels that are just like not improving anything, not changing anything, like just doing the same thing over and over because they know people are going to like buy it. Yeah. Um th- Yeah, so again with with Rock Band though, I don't know if you're done talking about Guitar Hero. I'm done. Okay, cool. <laughs> we can just edit that out. But, um, <laughs> so, with Rock Band, um, again, I mean, with this one, I think they capitalized on the Guitar Hero thing and, um, you know, adding more instruments and doing the vocals and stuff, which was, was really fun and cool. And then they put out the Beatles one, which I've actually heard mixed reviews about that because Beatles... I'm I'll, I'm not a big Beatles fan, but they are talented as musicians, and they work a lot of melodies and harmonies and things like that in their music that actually made the game like a little bit more challenging. It wasn't quite as straightforward. But then I know they put out Metallica Rock Band. And Lego Rock Band. And <laughs> I do like Legos, but not Lego <laughs> Rock Band. And uh, I know with, with the Metallica Rock Band... They actually made a double kick pedal, and as a drummer, that sincerely offends me, because one, Lars Ulrich is the biggest dickhead on earth, and if you buy anything that Lars Ulrich sponsors or endorses or anything, fucking don't. (laughs) Because he made metal drumsticks, okay? That's completely beside the point. Metal drumsticks? He made... Okay, they were metal... The drum, the bottom of the drumsticks were metal, and the top was wood. And you would you would play the drumsticks until the wood part broke, and then you would screw in a new wood like top. So it's like the bottom half is metal, and the top half is wood. And he used them on one of the albums from the '90s that everybody hates. And I should know this because I claim to like heavy music, but I fucking don't because I don't listen to that. Um, but yeah, so Rock Band, great idea. 
horrible capitalization, awful, and but some of the song selection in the original song the games were really awesome in my opinion. So Okay. Yeah, that's just how I feel though. Seems kind of contradictory. A little bit. It's all good. The original games is what I was talking about. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah. Um I, they they def they definitely had a DLC for the rock band games as well, like a lot of DLC. Again, is another thing that a lot of other companies are doing, you know, because they're just trying to keep up with the competition again. Because DLC is a smart thing to do, because again, people are going to buy into it. They're still going to keep doing that. But I mean, at the same time, it doesn't really add anything to the game other than something else to complete and like some other like achievement to get. You know, and I'm not, you know, I'm definitely an achievement whore when it comes to the Xbox, of course. Like, I want to get my gamer score up, like, a lot because I care about stuff like that because petty accomplishments make my life really exciting. Um, But, I mean, when we talk about DLC, we're definitely going to have to talk about Capcom. (laughs) Obviously. Uh... And the thing is, like, Capcom... They're like they're like that friend, like that childhood friend you had like back in the day, but you don't talk to anymore because they kind of turned into a douchebag. Because they went to college and they turned into a bro, and they're just like, "Hey man, like let's get drunk every day." Woo! It's like, man, like what happened? Like, you know, you used to be really cool. You were like really good at math, and like, you know, you got really good like scores on your SATs, and then you just fucking blew it, man. You just drank peepers and drank, ate pizza all day. What happened? It was like, dude, let's play MVC3 and Mega Man 10. It's like, man, what what happened to the first Mega Man game? Well, that was fun. And Mega Man X was, I liked it. Although Battle Network was really fun. I I liked the card system. That was pretty cool. And then they were like, hey, yeah, Street Fighter. Street Fighter's cool. And Street Fighter 4, not so much. Well, to talk more about um, the Mega Man thing... I think that they know that Mega Man is the shit and that they did nothing wrong with Mega Man. And that's the problem because they're not capitalizing on that, which in a way makes me happy, but in a way also makes me very sad. Because, okay, the the card games, the Battle Network games, those are still coming out. They're not called Battle Network anymore. There's like another series... Um, and I should do my homework and just like tell you the name, but I didn't. And, uh, but it's still, uh, like a card based, like action game on a grid and it looks really fun. And those are the only Mega Man games that are coming out besides the 8-bit retro remakes, uh, 9 and 10, which were really fucking hard. And, um, but in a way, like, I feel like if they made new games, um, I don't know if anybody played like X7 and X8, but those games were 3D and that hurts me. Like Mega Man is not a 3D game and, and we're not we're not talking about 2 and a half D. We're talking about like literal like 3D environments. Yeah, and yeah. and it's it was it was frustrating, but at the same time like the Mega Man franchise is, is the shit and the music in the games is always perfect. Super memorable. The the stages are fun and difficult, and the enemies are fucking hard and awesome. Capcom, please make more Mega Man games and don't fuck them up, okay? But on the on the level on on the whole subject of fucking up, um, you love to release games and. <sighs> They're sucking the life out of the franchise that they created, basically. <laughs> as okay, as the kings of of the fighting game community, um, or the fighting game industry, I guess they know that they can get away with releasing an installment or an expansion or an update that you pay for. They know that they can do that and get away with it, and that it hurts. <laughs> Like sincerely, like, all right, like I, I, I played Street Fighter Four for a little bit, and I definitely wasn't good, but I kept up with it. I bought, I bought the updates. I bought the fucking skins because I'm an idiot, and I bought the fucking arcade edition and Super and Arcade 2012, and I still have all this shit. 
And what is it doing now? It's sitting on my PS3. Because fucking nobody plays these games anymore. Nobody plays Street Fighter anymore. I mean, you yes, it's at Evo because Mr. Wizard loves Capcom. And and then and they did the same thing with Marvel. Like Marvel 3 is undoubtedly the most anticipated fighting game to ever be released. Um agreed. Yeah. <clears throat> Marvel 2 like the that game is timeless. People still compete in Marvel 2 instead of 3, but not in Evo because again, Mr. Wizard loves Capcom and they're putting out new you know, editions of Marvel 3, and, you know, I have a lot of respect for people that play fighting games, but at the same time, it sucks because they really are just being bullied at this point by Capcom and, and their releases, um, it, which is, it's a bummer, but at the same time, it's like, if you want to, you know, the frame data changes, and you got to keep your combos up, and maybe you got to, you know, fix your timing on shit, and it's like, if 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 that's what they have at the tournaments, then you got to pay the 40 or 60 or 30 bucks or whatever the hell they're going to charge you to keep up to date and stay on your game and go win tournaments or take prize money or have fun with your fucking friends. Like, that's just a bummer to me. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That's how I feel. I don't really have much <clears throat> to say about uh, those fighting games. I mean, I didn't really play MVC that much. I didn't buy it, obviously, because I didn't really think it was that good. Uh, I bought MVC 2 when it ported to the Xbox Live Arcade, because that game is my shit. I love Felicia. Oh, She is a bitch. wicked. She's a bitch. She's so jumpy and like... Yeah. But, I mean, another thing that I wanted to, uh, to talk about with Capcom was um, kind of how they're being unoriginal. Uh, more specifically, how they won't really try anything new. Um, it seems like they're just kind of they they don't want to they won't want to stray from Street Fighter, uh, Marvel, or or Mega Man. They just want to keep doing like the same thing over and over because again, like they know that they can cash in on that and they could actually get money from people when they make those like alternate titles. And it's just like again, like you know, you made Super Ghouls and Ghosts. And that game was fun. Why don't you do something like that again where you, like, you know, reinvent platforming, you know? Yeah. Make something fun and challenging because, like, the learn, like, the difficulty curve in, like, Mega Man and, like, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, like, those games were really fun and, like, challenging, you know? But. I, I, I know for an instance, or for an, <laughs> for an example, you spent some time recently playing a certain Resident Evil 6, Ugh. and it didn't sound like you were very happy with it, and... Uh, that game was literally painful to play. Like, I mean, I love you, Fat Tyla, so much. I do. But I fucking hate playing Resident Evil 6, because it's just so bad. I had more fun playing Resident Evil 5, the fifth one, than 6. And 6 was just... The storylines make no sense. The dialogue is horrible. There's the games are extremely sexist. It's repetitive. It's bland. It's the backgrounds are like not imaginative at all. The enemies are just boring and uninteresting and forgettable. It's just and they they end so abruptly. Like the storylines just end so abruptly. It's just like that was it. Like that's all I had to do is just defeat this guy. What the hell? Like what is that? You know, it's just Oh, God, it was so bad. Did you play earlier Resident Evil games? I played a little bit of the first one, but, I mean, you know, I I watch, like, a lot of Let's, let's Plays because I don't really have a life, so I usually just watch Let's Plays. No, I feel that. I yeah. just didn't play much Resident Evil games, and yeah. um, from, from feedback of all my friends, pretty much since Resident Evil 4, like, after Resident Evil 4, they haven't, yeah, they haven't really released anything that's memorable. I heard shit about zombies on motorcycles, and I kind of got turned off. Yeah. Um, but again, I didn't really play it. That's not really my, my thing, but I know um, Resident Evil is a respected respected franchise, or was at one yeah, point in time. And it, you know, it's sad to see that, that that's not the case anymore. They're, they're just raping the horror genre, and like calling Resident Evil 6 a horror game. 
No, it's not. It's not survival horror anymore. It's just, it's just another game. Barely. It's barely a game. <laughs> it's a it's, chore. It's it is a chore. It that that. Thank you. That Resident Evil Six is a fucking chore. It's not fun. It's. And they put this this little leveling system in there to like give you you can't do some buffs and skills like oh go and find these little little trophies that give you skill points and then later like randomly you'll just get to spend those and like give your character some upgrades and like they can aim better and like ba 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 and it's just oh it's so bad it's just like why don't you just make it a leveling game why don't you just add that RPG element in there and just let you level instead of going ha- going around and like find finding these like chess pieces which is like really poetic like ask us what it means like no i don't care i don't care that they look like queens and pawns and rooks and knights i don't care it's stupid word and i also know i also know um they're coming out with the uh, with new devil may cry games um i also didn't play devil may cry those games were actually fun like the thing is the new devil may cry actually looks like a lot of fun i have to admit I know they changed Dante, and people were freaking out about that. Yeah, they did. He looks really anime emo. Yeah, but mm-hmm. that's cool in Japan. Woo! Yeah, androgyny. Um, <laughs> androgyny. <laughs> Seriously, yes. let's blur the lines between these genders. Like that's that's gender neutrality right there. Like why? But if you're into that, that's cool for you. Yeah. Um. All right, and I mean, last but certainly most rapey. <laughs> honestly, let's just cut to the chase. Electronic Arts, um, EA, EA, Simpson. Um, you own Bioware, and I. It's the first blog that I am am releasing. It's called A Letter to Bioware, and I talk a lot about the the changes that have gone on since EA has gotten more rapey over the last few years there. Um I love how rapey is a word that rapey. <laughs> rapey. It's a good ad verb. Mm-hmm. Measure. A measuring system. Rapey. Three the, rapies out ra- of five. <laughs> the rapey scale is off the Richter. Okay. Uh <laughs> but yeah and and um I don't really know how much else to go into detail. Basically, um when did EA acquire BioWare? They've always had BioWare actually. Really? They have. Yeah, they've been a part of BioWare. I, I mean, maybe not forever, but as far as uh as I can remember, they were back in Neverwinter Nights. They helped wow. with KOTOR, they helped with Original Mass Effect 1, mm-hmm. uh Dragon Age. They I mean, BioWare had games before that, but I didn't play any of them, so as far as I'm concerned, Bioware's main career has has been part of EA, and um, Bioware's the the games they've come out with in the last I want to say three or years have have changed a lot compared to their originals. Um, I talk again a lot about this in my blog, but. For instance, let's say you buy Mass Effect 3. Um, regardless of the story, regardless of the ending, whatever, you want to play with your friends online uh, on PC, you literally have to install a program called Origin. Um, Origin is EA's version of Steam, where they basically say, you know, we're going to give you an account, and it's going to be the master account, and you're going to have all these games that you can play, and... Fucking, what online games do you play through EA besides Battlefield? Like, sure, the Mass Effect 3 was, like, multiplayer was fun for a while, like, but honestly, nobody likes, you know, the Swarm Scourge thing. That's only fun for so long. And, I mean, they're they're still putting out content for that, and that's really cool, and they're still doing the award weekends, and, like, that's really cool because... There are people that still enjoy playing that, and every once in a while, like, sure, I'll log in and play with my friends, but the fact that I have to have this this thing running in the background at all times is is really frustrating, and I think it's an awful way of of managing your customer base. Just, it, 
it's unnecessary. There's there's no reason. Well, for it's it. <clears throat> obviously it's unnecessary, but the thing is like since they made that a requirement, they can track statistics on specific users a lot easier, which means they can collect uh business data like more consistently and and, and easier, you know, because yeah. you have to make an account and then once you log into Origin, I'm guessing it probably tracks how mu- how long you've played a game, right? Just like Steam. Exactly. So then they can see how long people are playing games and when they log in, what time, and they're going to take that data and analyze it and use that for their next game because that's that's business intelligence right there. And that's it doesn't surprise me that EA did this. Like once you told me about this like over, like 45 minutes ago, I was just like, that's a smart move on their part because I bet you anything the marketing department was like, hey, we could do something like this and get a lot of statistics from this and use this to our advantage. Yeah. You know, make this a requirement because they know, again, they know that people are going to do that. They know they're going to do it. Why wouldn't they? Like, you want to play online with your friends. That's why people buy these games because they want to play them online. You know. A prime example of of this, even though it's not Origin, I bought uh, SSX the other the other day because I played uh, the original or I played SSX Tricky on GameCube and the game's fucking fun. So I bought SSX and I plugged it in. Yeah, I plugged it in to my PS3. Slapped it into your <laughs> PS3 <laughs> machine. Just whoop! <laughs> Just whoop! And, uh, and basically it was kind of obnoxious because they made me f- make some fucking PS3 EA account to log into the grid and they, it was like, they want me to play online and shit. And I'm just like, this fucking SSX, man, I don't play this shit online. Like, I don't know. Like, I'll play it online. But I'm just saying, like, the requirements that I had, like, the hoops I had to jump. And, again, I, pretty much exactly what you were saying. I'm sure it's all data that, they, that they're going to be using for sales and, mm-hmm. and marketing. And, but it's just, it's so <laughs> frustrating how, like, on the grid you have to be in order to play a video game. Like... I'm not I'm not worried about my anonymity or anything like that, but it's just why do I have to jump through all these hoops before like it wouldn't even let me play single player before I signed up. Like I couldn't be like, no, I'll do this shit later. Like it was like, no, if you want to actually play this fucking game, tutorial and all, you literally have to log in and create an account. I think that's bullshit, honestly. It's again unnecessary. Sure they're gaining monet just anything, but fuck them, like that's just bullshit. It's just taking away freedoms, in my opinion. Like, why do I have to f- sign up for your bullshit? And I'm sure I'm getting, like, emails and garbage now and all that shit. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but, I mean, the thing is, like, back in the day when when you would play, like, Super Mario World, you know? Like, how did they know that that would be the next progression of the Mario franchise? Because that was, like, that was in, like, the 90s, you know? And they didn't have those business, you know, they they didn't have origin, you know? Yeah. So it just, I mean, it goes to show you that companies don't need that, but the fact that they have it will allow them to pump out these hollow titles that they know, you know, people want because they're not making games that they think are good anymore. They're making games that people want. And that's, that's I think, the difference between, like, these companies and the indie gamers, like the indie game developers, like... They're making games that they know are good and the games that they want to make, not the games that somebody wants. Like, hey, can you make me a game that does this because this is all I care about? Like, no, they're not going to do that. Like, you know, watch Indie Game the Movie. It'll explain all that stuff to you. Like, they're not making games for you. They're making games for them. And that's why those games are so memorable and so much fun. (laughs) Yeah, that's, that's a perfect example. Um... On on the topic of Origin, playing online with your friends, EA, all that stuff, um, Battlefield 3, um, I know Chad won't, doesn't necessarily agree with me on this. I think the game's a lot of fun, um, but at the same time, uh, one of the things that they're doing uh, to increase their rapiness value would be the fact that they basically said, hey... We're going to make these these cool expansions. And granted, the content that they're releasing, you know, more vehicles, more guns, more maps, different kinds of maps. You know, they want to be able to, to compete with Call of Duty 
And so they're actually making like a, an entire, I don't want to say expansion, but an installment where it's all close quarters, which is, that's cool to me, you know? They're changing it up. Uh, a lot of the maps in Battlefield are way too fucking big. And, um, but I mean, you're supposed to play with, you know, 32 people on each team, so it needs to be that big. Um, the close quarters thing, like I said, they're doing uh, more, I know they're, one of them has to do with tanks, more tanks. I don't know if we need more tanks, but EA says we need more tanks, so they're going to charge us for it. Um, but, um, you know, so they're saying that, you know, hey, we're going to release these DLCs or these installments, and then they're saying, hey, you know, if you pay X amount of money now and do this premium thing, you know, you're not going to have to pay as much money. And, like, granted, again, you know, the content is good, but then I know within a month of them saying that premium the premium purchase of the installments, you know, to save money was going to be released. They also said, hey, we're already working on Battlefield 4. Fuck you. Legitimately. Um, the distance between Battlefield 2 to Battlefield 3 was 10 years? I, I was know. playing... It was a long time. I was so. playing Battlefield <laughs> 2 when I was, like, a fucking freshman in high school. It was like, definitely more than one year. That's it for was, sure way more than yeah. two or four or six years. It was a long-ass time. And sure, they put out the Bad Company games, and those were actually pretty fun, but they also had good, you know, single-player value um, and and multiplayer value. So um, the Battlefield single-player is, is cool, but again, most people, I feel, are, are purchasing the game for, for multiplayer purpose. Um, but, <clears throat> well, I mean, that's, I will, I will give you one thing. The only Battlefield game I ever really played was Battlefield 1942. That was my shit. I played that game all the time. And again, like, I didn't play that for the campaign because the campaign was exactly like the multiplayer. It was go capture points. That's it. You know, yeah. like it was the campaign was exactly like the multiplayer. So if you played through the campaign, you were ready for multiplayer. If you played through multiplayer, you didn't need to play the campaign because it was pointless. Like, yeah. you didn't really unlock anything. There was no point to, like, going through the campaign if you were just going to play multiplayer. But, I mean, it was fun. Like, you can get into, like, airplanes and, like, you know, beach he beachheads and whatnot. So, yeah, Battlefield 1942, that was my jam. Yeah, and I know <laughs> I know the earlier games were actually pretty revolutionary for, for shooters just because no other game, especially multiplayer allowed, you know, the versatility of being able to use vehicles and anti-vehicle machinery and just things like that. And I, th I think that's cool. I mean, I know that, I mean, how many people would you have on a, on a Battlefield 1942 server? Like you played that at network games, didn't you? No, actually I didn't. Okay. I, I would just, uh, I would usually play at my home, but, um, I think 48 people in one server is like one of the maximums but like you can have a lot of people on the server I yeah think. so even back in the day i mean you were on cable modem i'm assuming at that point in time but still like that's fucking humongous for what 2001 2002 like it must have been <laughs> i don't remember yeah it's it a long time ago yeah so that i mean that's that's fucking cool to me personally i mean the older games, sure, like, but also the game wasn't sixty bucks back then either. Yeah, no, you know, it wasn't. Battlefield nineteen forty two. I bet when it came out it was forty bucks. But then again, that was when inflation wasn't that bad. You know, that's true. Yeah, so that's that could that could be one of the things that like explains away not all of it, but some part of why games are so expensive now. But I mean, at the same time, I don't know. Again, like they're charging that much because they can get away with it. You know, yeah. they know people are going to pay that because they know that these people want to play those new titles because all their friends are going to get it. And they're like, oh, did you get the new Battlefield game? Like, no, I didn't. Like, well, I guess you're not going to play with it then. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I guess I'll just like sit here and like play the old game while everybody's playing the new one and be that guy. But like, you know. Again, like, that's the thing about the sports games, too. Like, when the new Madden comes out, it's like, oh, did you get the new Madden? No, I didn't. Like, oh, I guess you're not going to play with this then. It's like, oh, okay. You know, it's like, why? They, they just keep making... And I, I understand that the new Madden games, like, they actually do improve on the controls. And, like, I mean, I've seen... I've 
never played a Madden game. I I usually try to stay away from them. Like 93, 93, <laughs> 1993. Madden 93 is my shit. Keep going though. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, like from what I've been hearing from like my friends that actually do play sports games, they actually did improve on the controls and the gameplay when it comes to the Madden franchise. But now it's just getting to the point where they don't really need to improve on anything. The only thing they're going to be updating or improving or like maybe adding is like. New team stats. The roster. Rosters. I, I know, you know for a fact. A, I don't really know if there's anything else they're going to do. Like adding training modes to like make your players better, you know, in the like campaign mode or like coach mode, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I um I know for a fact that is pretty much the sole reason a lot of people, like I know in high school, you know, people are like, oh, you're a gamer. Like, oh, come play Madden with me. It's like. No, first of all, and second of all, um, you know, the, the, they would pretty much tell me like I, I'm I'm positive I asked somebody and they literally said the only reason I, that we buy these games at this point is just so that we can have the new players that are in the upcoming year, you know, because they get that roster early on and then they're like, all right, we got to program how all these players look and their height and just everything, and now they're in the game and it's just like. You really are, like, I literally, I guarantee you I would have more fun playing Madden 93 than I would playing 2013 or whatever the shit's out now. And, you know, um, I'm surprised that we actually didn't put this down here because now that we're talking about the sports games, I completely forgot about this and I don't know why we didn't think of this, but do you remember that South Park episode where the crack, where they do the crack baby, like, uh athletics team where like Cartman starts this this uh league where he just like gives crack babies like a little piece of crack and has them fight over it and, like records that and puts that on the internet or something like that and then EA finds out about it and, like he, <laughs> they find out that it's like an actual league and then they buy that the rights to that and basically don't give money to the to the crack babies or their parents at all and they're just like well since they're like, kind of, like, going to school, you know? Because they're going to be going to school. Like, they would just put them in, like, daycares. They're just like, well, we can't really, like, give the the students or, like, whatever their money because, like, you know, we own their likenesses or something like that. So, basically what they're talking about is how EA can get away with making NCAA games and not actually paying those students because they're students. They're not just football players. They're students, you know? And they could really use that money for their tuition, yeah. And stuff like that. But they're not, EA doesn't give them money, you know? And like, that's basically what South Park was saying. It's just like, EA is evil because of this, because of the NCAA games they make, like these sports games, and they don't give the players their money that they deserve. Like when they, when people sell, you know, they can't even, they can't even sell like uh, jerseys of certain players because that's like favoritism or something like that. I don't know. But like, you know, that's a thing that EA gets away with that I think is horrible and really shitty you know like they should give them their money like they're in this game just because they're students doesn't mean you can't give them their money and like ea just made up these rules just because damn yeah. i didn't even know about that i yeah you should go back and watch that episode like it'll it it yeah it's horrible ea is evil they're dicks yeah they're they're really really bad <laughs> hmm. so yeah i guess I guess that's pretty much the the end of it. That's that is a wrap. So if you have any uh any ideas about uh companies that also could be on the EA Simpson if I did it list, <laughs> you know, let us know. Uh if you disagreed with us, let us know, you know, tell us why. Uh we want to hear from you uh because uh we don't want you to get raped like uh like some of the people out there are so like rate and subscribe please <laughs> um no but seriously like uh any positive or negative comments would be really appreciated like i don't care if you're just calling us dumb or like if i misspoke and said something stupid please point it out because that'd be funny um but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast it was, it was nice having you on the final boss mike thank, thank you, you. Yeah. I, I i really appreciate it so that's gonna do it for the final boss i'm raccoon chat troll stop gaming and i'm jocelyn thanks bye